Pagananjana Shalakaya Chakshuram Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Nama Shri Chaitanya Mano Bishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Svayam Rupakadamahyam Dadati Svapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yutta Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavangscha Shri Rupam Sagajatam Sahagana Raganatam Vitam Tang Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitangscha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Shimate Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Itinamine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshadine Vancha Kalpatarubhyascha Kripa Sindhubhya Evacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Nama Vancha Kalpatarubhyascha Kripa Sindhubhya Evacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Nama He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dinabando Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gorangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Rishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gauravakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama Hare Hare. Welcome everyone to Saturday Sangha. It's Saturday again. And we are having Sangha. So it's Saturday Sangha. And we are reading, we are singing uh, from Srila Bhakti Nod Thakur's songbook, Sharanagati. One of uh, three, maybe four songbooks <laughs> compiled, written and compiled by Bhakti Nod Thakur. Um, and we are reading and singing song number four of Goptritve Varanam. Uh, the section of Sharanagati on choosing choosing protection, we might or choosing maintenance, <laughs> maintenance protection uh, of the Lord. Mm. And the first verse is translation. O oh, youthful son of the king of Raja, 
You are Lord of all lords, according to your will, <clears throat> creation and destruction take place in the universe. According to your will, Lord Brahma creates, and according to your will, Lord Vishnu maintains. According to your will, Lord Shiva destroys. And according to your will, Maya constructs the prison house of this world. According to your will, the living beings take birth and die. And according to your will, they meet with prosperity and ruin, happiness and sorrow. The tiny soul bound up by Maya vainly struggles in the fetters, fetters of worldly desires. Without your sanction, he is unable to do anything. You are my only protector and maintainer, except for your lotus feet. There is no other hope for me. No longer confident of my own strength and endeavor, I have become solely dependent on your will. Bhaktivinoda is most poor, and his pride has been leveled. Now, in accordance with your will, he lives and dies. <clears throat> okay, let's try it. To me, Sarveshvareshvar, Brajendra Kumar, Tomara Ichai Vishve Sri Janna Sangha. To me, Sarveshvareshvar, Brajendra Kumar, Tomara Ichai Vishve. Srijana Sangsa Tava Icha Mata Brahma Korena Srijan Tava Icha Mata Vishnu Korena Palana Tava Icha Mata Brahma Korena Srijan Tava Icha Mata Vishnu Korena Pala Tava Icha Mate Shiva Korena Sangha Tava Icha Mate Maya Sri Jekaraga Tava Icha Mate Shiva Korena Sangha Tava Icha Mote Maya Shije Karaga Tava Icha Mote Jive Janama Maran Shangrid Hini Pate Duka Shuka Shanghatan Tava Icha Mate Jive Janama Maran Sangrid Hini Pate Duga Shuka Sangata Miche Maya Badha Miche Maya Badha Jiva Asha Pashe Pire Tava Icha Bina Kichu Kori Te Napade Miche Maya Badha Jiva Asha Pashe Pire 
Tava itcha vina kichu kori te na pare. Tumito rakako ar palaka amar. Tomara charana vina asana hiya. Tumito rakako ar palaka amar. Tomara charana vina asana hiya. Nija bala cheshta prati bara sachadiya. Tomara itchaya chinyam hara kariya. Nija bala cheshta prati bara sachadiya. Tomara itchai achi nirmara koriya. Vakati vinod ati dina akin chan. Tomara itchai tar jivana mara. Vakati vinod ati dina akin chan. Tomara itchai ta jivana marana. Tumi sarveshvareshvar rajendra kumar. Tomara itchai vishe srijana sanghar. Tumi sarveshvareshvar rajendra kumar. Tomara itchai vishe shri jana sangha. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram. Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare 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 Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare 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 Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Bo. Hare go, Hare go, Hare Hare go. Nitai gor, Hare go, Hare go, Hare go, go Hare go.
Tumi Sarveshvareshvar Brajendra Kumar. O youthful son of King Braja, you are Lord of all lords. So, of course, uh, Ishvara means Lord, and it says you are the Ishvara of the Ishvaras. How many Ishvaras? Sarva Ishvara. Mm. According to your will, creation and destruction take place in the universe. Um, here the translation is used repeatedly. Uh, will, or will for itcha. Sometimes uh, itcha is translated as desire, um, which is also appropriate. We might look up the word later, but it it seems to have also more this sense um, of will, uh, because there's also itcha shakti uh, when the Lord has. The Lord's Icha Shakti uh, is that power of things happening by the by the will of the Lord, not just His desire. Tomar Ichai Bishve in the universe, Srijana Sanghara, Srijana uh, creation, Sanghara, uh, the destruction. Srijana, this is all very Sanskritic. Srijana. Sridj means um, to overflow, to spill. So the spilling over uh, of the Lord's energy is, is constitutes the creation, you can say. And hara, hara, harana is, means removing, sanghara, uh, the destruction. According to your will, Lord Brahma creates, and according to your will, Lord Vishnu maintains. Tava itcha mato. Mato here meaning simply or only. Tava itcha mato, Brahma koren srijan. Tava itcha mato, Vishnu koren palam. So in the first verse, um, we have the Lord as causing creation and destruction. And here we have Lord Brahma causing creation, but by the will of the Lord. And uh, Vishnu, by the will of Brajendra Kumar, is Palana, is protecting, maintaining the world. Uh, according to your will, Lord Shiva destroys. Tava itcha mote. Shiva Koren Sanghar and according to your will, Maya constructs the prison house of this world. Tava Icha Mote Maya Srije Karagar. So Karagar uh, would be prison and Srije creation in create in the creation of the prison. Uh, of Maya. This is also the Lord's desire. Tava, okay, Tava Icha Mate Jiver Janama Marana. By your will, according to your will, the living beings take birth and die. And according to your will, they meet with prosperity and ruin, happiness and Sorrow, Sanghridi, Nipate, Dukkha, Sukha, Sanghatana. Hmm. Samridhi is uh, is uh, worldly hmm. success, prosperity. Nipate, falling down, literally. Uh, nicely translated here as ruin. Dukkha, of course, misery, sukha, happiness, sangatana, mm, the meeting with. So it's an interesting uh, way of understanding. There's there's these two entities we can say these these ways of experiencing, and um, 
we meet them sometimes. <laughs> sometimes we meet happiness, sometimes we meet distress. So it's like the happiness is there, it's out there, and sometimes our, you can say, our train, our vehicle of our body meets with that, and then we move on. And then there's some dukkha somewhere, and we meet with that, and then we move on. Miche maya bodha jiva asha pashe pire. Hmm. The tiny soul bound up by maya vainly struggles in the fetters of worldly desire. So miche uh, would be Bengali from mitya, and here translated as vainly, so hope, hopelessly or without any without any benefit. Miche um, maya bodha with the the bondage of maya, the jiva, <clears throat> asha pashe, mm, uh, asha, asha means hope and pasha means rope. <laughs> the, one is bound by the rope of hope. Mm. Uh, and pire, I guess, means struggles. Then tava icha bina, without your will, kichukorite napare, nothing, nothing is going to happen. Uh, we're unable to do anything. Jiva cannot do anything. Number six, you are my only protector and maintainer. Tumito rakako arpalaka amar. Rakako mm, would be Bengali of rakshaka, where uh, what happens with uh, many Prakrit languages is uh, the k, k uh, S with a dot, as we transliterate, iksha, uh, becomes actually a double K, rakka. Mm -hmm. uh, so we see also parik, parikshit becomes parikkit, and so on. Uh, that's uh, common of uh, different Prakri languages. Um, so rakkako. Ar palaka amar. You are my amar. Um, rakaka and palaka. And the to uh, is a kind of emphasis word in Bengali. Tumito, you. You, it's you <laughs> who are doing this. Tomar choron bina asha nahi ar. Except for your lotus feet, there's no other hope for me. Ara uh, means more or other. Mm. Tomar charan bina, without your lotus feet. Charan um, is a kind of fancy word for feet, and it's, uh, it's usually translated lotus feet because it has uh, that sense of uh, respectable Respect, there are no ordinary feet, so they're lotus feet. And they're what we move with. Charana also means moving, of course. Nija bolo cheshta proti barasa chadiya. No longer confident of my own strength and endeavor. Uh, I have become solely dependent on your will. Nijabala, cheshta, my own strength and effort. Uh, prati, mm, with regard to or against. Uh, barasa, my, uh, I guess it's confidence. Chadiya, having given up my... Uh, Dependence, my expectation from this. Tomar ichai achinir bar koriya. I have become solely dependent on your will. Nirbhar 
de dependent. Kodiya, I have um, made myself dependent. And finally, Bhaktivinod, Bhaktivinod, Oti Din Akinchan. Bhaktivinod is most poor and his pride has been leveled. <laughs> That's a nice translation. Tomar Ichai Tar Jivan Maran. Now, in accord with your will, he lives and dies. So, Ati Din Dina means uh, lowly or wretched. And Akinshana, again, that Sanskrit uh, is uh, literally without possessions, without anything, one who is uh, with nothing. So he says, my pride <laughs> has been leveled because our pride is based on, on possessions. We, we think we are who we are because of what we have. <laughs> Just kind of uh, interesting, considering that uh, we don't actually have anything because everything is uh, simply on loan. We're just borrowing whatever we have, uh, whatever abilities, whatever material things we have, it's all borrowed and it's all going to be taken away in due course, uh, and yet uh, this strange phenomenon, we have so much pride in what we think we have. Yeah, so this is, uh, of course, uh, a nice meditation for us to think how everything uh, is, it's all about it's not about accident, it's not about chance, it's about uh, divine will. And uh, we understand that will is, um, well, two things. One is it, um, it always is fulfilled. Krishna's will is never frustrated. It's always whatever he wills is realized. And also, uh, whatever he wills is good. In some way that we may not understand, or maybe most of the time don't understand, uh, we, we assume as this is the devotional spirit, this is bhakti, is to assume and also to expe expect uh, that um, to anticipate the Lord's blessings. So there we are. Tava um, icha mato, just by your desire. Quite in contrast to ourselves, our will uh, is, hmm, well, <laughs> we may will all day long for something to happen and it doesn't happen. Uh, but Krishna wills and there it is all in, in the most wonderful ways. Srila Bhaktivin Thakur Ki Jai Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, may I say something on the song? To all of you. Thank you for joining our oh, sangha. Saturday Sangha. What better way to spend Saturday afternoon or morning or evening or wherever you are? <laughs> um, mm, yeah, there's probably a lot of ways one could spend this time, but therefore I am very appreciating that you are spending this time in this way. And for me, it's an inspiration, of course, otherwise I wouldn't uh, have this program. Um, okay, we have, I know we have at least one uh, sharing. I don't know if we have more than one. 
ዙር ማህራጁ ይሄን መንጋዋቻሪን ከማተጀ from Radadesh, from sunny Radadesh. Um, so, yeah, I wanted to actually, um, Hare Krishna to all the God brothers and God sisters and all devotees present, and my obeisance is to Gurmaraj and everybody else. Um, I wanted to say that actually it's really inspiring and I think we all want to hear from each one of us to get to know each other better. <laughs> so I thought, thought why I wouldn't do the same but I didn't have enough courage until Gurmaraj encouraged me. So I thought, okay, there is no way out. <laughs> so uh, one, one small request is uh, keep in mind there are translators. Okay. Uh, and that means uh, maybe not speaking quite so fast. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so... Um, I wanted to say a little bit about uh, Sangha that we started very spontaneously in Radhadesh. Um, it started all with thinking of what to do for Radhashtami, for Shimati Radharani. So we, um, the idea came up that we would sing a song which is called Radha Kripa Kataksha Stava Raja. It's a very beautiful song that's sung in um, Rindavan, daily apparently, in many places. Um, and we thought, why not Radha Gopinath are here in Radhadesh so we can off make this offering. So we composed like a very nice tune and it became like a Sangha just practicing it. And then we sang it once and many devotees were really pleased with that. So we thought, okay, we can record that and continue. <laughs> And if you will see in the song, I, I will share the recording with all of you. Um, there are some certain sp auspicious days when this song could be chanted. The whole song is about glorification of Shimati Radharani, and um, it's very, very sweet. And then it says also that if one chants it on some certain lunar days, one gets a lot of benefit. <laughs> um, so we thought, why not? <laughs> we can do that. So we started to chant it. Um, couple of times a month um, and as the Purshota month was approaching we thought maybe we can do something extra so we started all to do after the Srimad Bhagavatam class in the temple room and there were different devotees joining every time so we thought why not adding Krishna Kripa Kataksha which is another sweet song which is sang also in um, Vrindavan it's kind of a sequel to Radha Kripa Kataksha. So we added that one and now we're singing both. Um, from that we thought why not adding something for Purushota month specifically. We heard that uh, Sri Jagannathashtakam is very nice um, auspicious song according to I don't know which scripture but apparently it's very auspicious to sing during this month. It's about Lord Jagannath and <clears throat> about glorification of Lord Jagannath. And um, also to read the 15th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, which is Purushottam Yoga. So we do that now daily. Um, we first sing the song and then we recite the verses of Bhagavad Gita and then read the translation one by one. So everybody's engaged and we also offer a ghee lamp. So basically it's an open Sangha and many times different devotees join and they're inspired. And we've heard that many devotees join online. So actually also online devotees get inspired and they sing with us and read with us like that. So um, online meaning we have a broadcasting. Radhadesh has an online broadcasting through the temple room and um, one can hear what's happening in there. So um, yeah, this is just something that we have found very uplifting and we would like to continue, of course, for the next months. We see we have different ideas and inspirations coming up. And then we will just probably try to follow that. Or maybe read different parts of Bhagavad Gita together or read, um, sing the songs of the Acharyas, um, Narutam Dastakur and so on. And we've found out also how repetitiveness is actually really um, helpful because 
just reading Bhagavad Gita, the same chapter every single day, there's different insights every day coming up, um, realizing what Prabhupada meant and what different words mean. And just the Sanskrit is actually so beautiful. So this, this is very inspiring for us and hopefully it will be for you as well. I will share now this link to the song in the chat. And then whenever you have time, you can um, listen to it. Oh, sorry. I have to share it with everybody like that. So hopefully this will be inspiring to you as well. Uh, thank you. Question. Um, you're, you're doing this, uh, you're singing this every morning. Uh, did I understand right? Um, after, after the morning Bhagavatam class? Yeah, so when the class is finished, we just stay longer, <laughs> skip breakfast, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, usually takes us between half an hour, 45 minutes, something like that. It depends. Uh -huh. um, yeah. So you're usually starting somewhere between uh, maybe quarter to nine and nine o'clock? Yes, on Brussels time. Brussels, yes. Mm. Okay, sounds good. So <laughs> if one just tunes into um, Radhadesh online, which I suppose is available through uh, Mayapur TV, right? Yes, I think it's also Radhadesh TV. I can post that as well. So um, Radhadesh Radhadesh has its own TV broadcast. <laughs> uh. Right now, the cameras are not uh, turned towards the temple room because of different restrictions with the COVID. So devotees want to be careful. So it, it, we can always see the deities. So that's very nice. The cameras are not aimed in the temple because of protecting with COVID. I don't get the connection there. <laughs> yes, because um, in Belgium, it's obligatory to wear masks in religious institutions. Oh, I see. And uh, only in yeah. religious institutions and few other public institutions. Right, right. So, I see. Just to avoid any... Any misunderstandings or something. <laughs> okay. Good. Yeah, very nice. Okay. Um and unless there's someone else who wants to share something, Kaveri. Yes, Mataji Kaveri would like to share. Hare Krishna, Gurudev. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna. Hare everybody. Um, thank you. I thought about sharing something that um, funny and nice that is happening this month for me. So I woke up one day first day of this month and also came to know that there's something called Inktober. Inktober. It's uh, during this month, different artists from everywhere. But I think this originated in, in the United States. Um, make a prompt list with different random items and you draw every day one item from that prompt. And I thought, oh, this could be good for me because I usually struggle to, you know, with um, showing up every day and do something, make something. And uh, I've been trying to, how can I do to actually drag myself into doing this? And, and I thought, oh, this might be helpful. So I looked around different uh, lists, prompt lists, and they were nice, but like they were very random. Some were like uh, Halloween prompt lists. So were just, some of them were just random. The first day of October, you have to draw, you have to draw a tooth and then a bucket and then, yeah, whatever, yeah. And then I thought, I'll make my own list and I can, I can, you know, it's for me, so whatever. I can do, you know, like Krishna Lila, Gora Lila another week, another week, like avatars and so on. And 
um, I, sorry, maybe I'm, I'm doing it this too fast. And then I, I thought, okay, I'll post it on my Instagram. And suddenly people got excited and they joined to that list. People in India, people in the US and different places. And they get, and I get to share, they tag me. So I get to see all of them, all of their works. And I share it with people. And then devotees from different communities start saying like, oh, this is so nice because we can see we, we get to see more artists, Vaishnava artists, and what they do with their prompts. And they get to, to know their art. And the artists get to uh, read pastimes to you know, work on those, on, on those images. Um, last, um, yesterday was Janava. It was, go to, we're finishing Go to Lula week. Um, and it was Janava Devi, and some of them were like, you know, it was so inspiring to, to read about her and, um, yeah, to get to know more or to, ex to see paintings of her from different artists. They don't have to be necessarily um, technically perfect. It's just the act of um, making something every day. And a, a sort of community started to happen. And I'm super happy about it. If, um, I don't know how to share, but like I, I can leave a link to the Instagram account and, and you'll see every day um, what, they're, what they're post. And um, I don't know, I thought it was super inspiring. I, I did it for, for me <laughs> to, to inspire myself to, okay, every day I, I'm gonna draw something. And then it came up, it, it became something nicer and bigger and very beautiful. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you going to show us any of the drawings you've done for this? <laughs> I didn't plan to, sh to show and tell, but um, I can send a link to the Instagram uh -huh. account. Okay. And then if you have an Instagram, and even if you don't have an Instagram with the link, you can see uh, the, mm -hmm. the post. And then I'll, I'll put them in a story so you can see the work of everybody. Okay. But it's yeah, really that's... inspiring. <laughs> it's a nice idea. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much. Very good, very good. Okay. Um, yeah, someone is, uh, so to say, threatening to make an Instagram account for me. <laughs> I told them you can do that, but you have to manage it. I can't, I don't have the time for that. So they're, they're working on that. So yeah, it's an interesting thing, these different social media, how things can can spread. And uh, why not? Why not use them for Krishna? And have, a, have fun at the same time. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyone else uh, to show and tell or just tell or just show? spontaneously. Otherwise, uh, Mangala Chandrika, you had a question you sent me a couple of days ago. And I was thinking, well, why not we talk about it here? And uh, it'll be an interesting topic for everyone, I think. Okay. Um, I, I think some Kalindi a lady, she asked if Daniel could translate more loud. I don't know if, if it's possible. In this chat, she mentions that it's not loud enough. Oh. But I don't know if that's possible to correct. Um, OK, I will just say my question. <laughs> um, I was thinking a lot about the, um, uh, how do you call it, the, the value or the role of remorse in our lives, because um, yeah, many times when we are practicing uh, devotional service and we are getting um, 
in different relationships, doing different services, activities, and so on. With time, we see that perhaps some of them were based on wrong conceptions, wrong attitude, whatever it may be. So <clears throat> remorse may come up and I can understand that remorse has a very positive role, even though it's very painful and it's something for us to learn, uh, to change, to stop doing whatever it is. At the same time, it seems that we can go two ways, <laughs> that we can go either, um, you know, like wallowing in remorse and that takes the energy and it takes the um, courage and vision or, um, yeah whatever, moving forward, or we can just uh, escape the pain, basically, and just jump over and just say, okay, you know, I'm just going to do better, but I, I don't deal with the pain at all. I mean, I, my feeling is it's something in between. Um, but I wanted to hear your input on how to best deal with remorse and what's the real value of remorse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this um, could be a big topic. <laughs> uh, one, one thing first came to mind is that maybe it was two or three weeks ago, um, His Holiness Dhanodhar Swami Maharaj uh, wrote one of his um, Monday morning greeting uh, posts <clears throat> uh, on this topic uh, and I didn't have time to try to find it again but uh, if you look on his website called uh, Waves of Devotion you may be able to find it what I remember from uh, his blog is he's speaking quite positively of the benefits of remorse. That is to say, for the sake of uh, purification, uh, as I remember, he's saying remorse, to, to feel remorse is essential for uh, making spiritual progress. And he makes an interesting point that mm, remorse can be understood as tapasya. Um, and I think he's taking this from Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur and connecting it also with initiation. Uh, we sometimes uh, may remember that Bhakti Nodhakur talks about the five samskaras, pancha samskara, and one of them is, is tapa, and tapa means um, literally heat, but it comes to mean austerity, uh, and in the literal sense of uh, the way Initiation is done in some Vaishnav Sampradayas or uh, is sometimes done. They literally take a, a hot brand and you get branded on your shoulders with a Shanka and Chakra. This is the Sri Vaishnav Sampradaya. So you get a moment of yow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, and so it's hot <laughs> that's tapa but uh, the inner sense of tapa is uh, as Dhanar Dharmaraj points out is a sense of remorse a sense of regret for uh, all that one has done all that one has not done uh, in in Catholic theology, Roman Catholic theology, there's sins of commission and sins of omission. <laughs> it 
sins of things, sinful acts, something you do, and uh, and not doing something that you should do. Uh, and of course, this is suggested also uh, by Krishna in Bhagavad Gita uh, about uh, the complexities of karma and akarma. Mm. Kim karma kim akarma ti kavyo api atramohita. This is bewildering, he says. So, um, so to feel remorse, I was thinking about this in my own in relate in my own life uh, this morning. Lots of things to feel remorseful about, um, and one I was thinking about is why didn't I join the devotees when I first saw them? Why didn't uh, I? I first saw devotees in. 1969, when I started university in Berkeley, and I saw the devotees practically every day <laughs> for the next um, two years. 69, 70, 70, 71, two and a half years. <laughs> I saw them, I heard them. Uh, but I didn't join them. <laughs> and I was thinking if I had had one friend who, you know, might have said, hey, let's go check out the Hare Krishnas or uh, they have this really nice vegetarian feast or something. Uh, but none of my friends were connected. Not that I had many friends, but nobody said, hey, let's go check out the Hare Krishnas. Uh, I did kind of check out the Hare Krishnas a couple of times uh, by uh, taking their Back to Godhead magazine and Prasadam once or twice. But, uh, you know, that's a kind of point of remorse that I could have saved uh, so, much, mm, so much trouble and so much anxiety. Uh, of my studies for the next two years. And who knows what else I might have saved. So that's a kind of um, something I feel some remorse about. The other side, I think, well, uh, that's just the way things happened. <laughs> I don't, maybe I don't feel enough remorse. Uh, but and then I was thinking about this in relation to the, uh, the bigger subject we might reflect on is, um, well, in, in the public sphere, uh, the, whole, the whole question of uh, punishment of criminals. And... Uh, there's this all there's this ongoing debate about uh, what should be done with cr criminals should it should it be punishment or should it be reform or should it be a combination of both should it be punishment to um, the threat of punishment will keep people from committing crimes or do we focus on reform uh, so that a person who's committed a crime will not do the same again? And there's a lot of a lot of discussion about what is it called revitism, I think. <clears throat> um, maybe that's not the word. They, they, they talk about percentages of convicts returning to prison after 
after they've been in prison and then they're released after their punishment, then how many prisoners come back? Um, and it seems to me there's, uh, in, in most places, especially in America, uh, the, the prison system is a scandal. I mean, it's, first of all, the numbers, I mean, this goes into another subject, <laughs> but the highest percentage uh, of um, imprisonment happens in America. Seven, more than 700 people per 100,000. Uh, and then the next highest, I think, is um, either China or Russia with 500 for 100,000. Anyway, um, what is it that, what actually puts us on the right track back after we do something wrong? And we can say, I would say, that a, genu a genuine feeling of remorse is, is crucial. A genuine feeling that, oh, I'm such a fool, I'm such a rascal. Because this feeling can be the beginning of a change, a real change of behavior. Now, one of the problems in the public sphere, and when I say public, I mean also within community of devotees, is how do you measure remorse? And I was thinking the way we see it among Vaishnavas, it's very interesting. We read, was it last week? I think so. Uh, we read about uh, this Brahmin in Mathura who was uh, constantly offending Brahmin, uh, offending the Vaishnavas. And then uh, he, he was transformed by the mercy of Advaita Charya. And then what did that Brahmin do? Does anyone remember? I know that was last week, a long time ago. <laughs> that Brahman went door to door. <laughs> he went to all of those Vaishnavas that he had offended and he knocked on their door and he begged their forgiveness one after another. And of course we know um, from Vrindavan Das Thakur, um, much more famously perhaps, Jai and Vijay, uh, who were such heavy criminals, after their encounter with Mahaprabhu and Nityananda Prabhu, uh, their hearts were, were changed and they felt uh, profound remorse. And then uh, they did... Hmm, Correct me if I'm wrong. They did two things. One was they they constructed a ghat. Is that right? Maybe I'm mixing things up. I think they constructed one ghat for the re residents uh, on the Ganga. And uh, they went uh, from place to place and threw themselves before all the people and begged their forgiveness. So usually um, when there's something to be remorseful about, it's, um, it, it's something in relation to someone else, isn't it? <laughs> and so we want, to, we want to feel remorse, which we can say is a change of heart, uh, of ourselves, and uh, we we may understand the need to beg forgiveness from 
uh, whoever we have disturbed. But uh, your question is also how to find the right balance because we don't want to go around being morose. Um, we could, if, if we wanted to, uh, we could be like the Calvinists. You know the Calvinists? Calvinist Christianity. Um, Calvinism was... Um, what was his name? John Calvin, 16th century. Sometime around the time, maybe later, uh, of Lord Chaitanya. He developed this whole theology of Christianity, which really, really emphasized how totally, totally, totally fallen we are, uh, perverted we are. Everyone is, we're hopelessly fallen and our only hope is the grace of god and <laughs> predestination for him it was all predestined either you're uh, um, going to be delivered or not and that is already set in stone there's nothing you can do about it anyway we could be <laughs> calvinists but we maybe don't want to do that. Instead, we want to be Vaishnavas, and Vaishnavas are, are joyful. Um, and so where is the balance between remorse and morose? Those words are almost spelled the same. Where is the balance? Well, one thought I had is just uh, what Krishna is telling Arjuna in the very beginning of Bhagavad Gita. Asochan and Vasochas Tong. Pragyavadangs Chabasade Gatasun Akadasungs Chat Na Anusochanti Pandita. Don't go on being re, um, lamenting. Anusochanti. Uh, don't make it into your religion because it could turn into uh, some sort of, it could get perverted into wanting special attention. Oh, I'm so fallen. <laughs> yeah, Srila Prabhupada, I've told that. I don't remember where it happened. The devotee threw himself before Srila Prabhupada said, Prabhupada, I'm the most fallen. Devote, Prabhupada said, you're not the most anything. <laughs> so, so we don't want to make it into our, you know, we don't, uh, we don't want to uh, become obsessed with our faults. We want to move on. And a, a basic principle of bhakti is um, getting back on the horse after we fall off the horse. That's a basic principle of uh, horse riding. If you're I don't know anything about horse riding except this. <laughs> if somehow or other you fall off the horse, you should immediately get back on the horse because if you don't, <clears throat> you're gonna be afraid of the horse and the horse is gonna be afraid of you. Uh, so, yeah, there's a, there's a reference to horse training in 11th Canto, incidentally, um, that there's a process of, <clears throat> of training uh, a horse, and that's similar to training the mind. Uh, one has to be firm, but also gentle. Gentle, but firm. Um, what else? Um, Oh, I was thinking, going back to the prison story. 
Uh, there's, I've maybe told this once, but, um, and maybe it's still online. Um, not that I recommend this particular method of meditation, but there's a really very good uh, documentary on YouTube. Uh, it's a full length documentary. It's about one hour. It's called Doing Time, Doing Vipassana. And it's about Tihar Jail in Delhi. Tihar Jail, I think it's called Tihar Prison, is infamous for uh, its extremely uh, dangerous prisoners, but also its extreme, everything about it is extreme. At least it has been in the past. Uh, overcrowded jail and just a really terrible place. So uh, this uh, lady whose name is slipping my mind, she became chief of police at one time, famous lady who's, I don't know if she's still the governor of Pond Pondicherry now, um, but she became uh, in charge for this for this jail. And she, she said, uh, okay, you put me in charge of this crazy place. We're going to make this place into an ashram. What? Are you crazy? <laughs> so she called in one expert, one specialist uh, on um, uh, this uh, Vipassana meditation, which is, it's a ten, the full program is 10 days. Basically, it's 10 days of silence, of kind of like absolute silence in a group. You just sit there. Uh, that, I don't know. But they, uh, they did it as an experiment. They took a small group of prisoners, they ran the program, and they found that it had a positive effect on them. And then they did it uh, with more prisoners, and it had also a positive effect. And um, I mean, there's some very moving uh, scenes uh, toward the end of the film of, of prisoners crying like children and um, embracing the guards and just, you know, having become completely transformed, or so it seems. Uh, but this is kind of interesting to think about. Oh, and I just wanted to once more come back to the question of, uh, of our community of Vaishnavas. What do we do when someone does something which is uh, very wrong, at what point, having, having put that person uh, in a position of, how to say, of punishment, of exclusion from the community, or limited in various ways in what they can do, at what point do we, uh, do we recognize, okay, this person is now reformed? Or do we say, no, this person is forever and ever in this life uh, condemned? It, it can really be an, a, a challenging question. And related to this, I think, <laughs> I'm going in all directions, um, related to this, I think, is the social phenomenon of scapegoating. Uh, a scapegoat is someone who a community identifies as being in some way bad, and then they, the community drives that person out of the community with this, with the feeling that the reason there's a, the only reason there's a problem in our society is because of this one person. If we can just get rid of this one person, 
everything will be all right. So that's a tendency that um, it's there in, in communities. It goes back uh, to ancient times and it's called scapegoating. So I think it's also something we have to watch out for uh, that we don't, uh, in, in a community situation, uh, practice scapegoating it can be very, very dangerous. Okay, so I've sort of gone around the universe on that one, um, but maybe others have comments to your question, Mangala Chandrika. If I can say something? Yes, please. I was just thinking what you were just saying about what do we do in our community? And I think after, I guess my first thought was like, if it, the person has done something bad, is it a danger to others uh, or not? But after something has been decided, then you have, you almost, I almost feel that sometimes we kind of like decide to own who can be a devotee, who can be called a devotee or not. And that's mm -hmm. when I think maybe it gets a little bit too far and we, we do not allow ourselves to forgive or to move on. And, yeah. for that, and for that matter, I always feel, well, how, how, you, how you judge that, if judge is the word, I don't know. But I always felt it was guna and karma. If the person is sincerely remorse and moves on, then the person will act accordingly, will act as a Vaishnava. And the person who, you know, his, he, he acts as a Vaishnava, he has the mood of a Vaishnava, then that person is a Vaishnava. If mm -hmm. they have been, if they, I don't know how to say, if paid what they have, with the wrong that they did. Paid their dues. Yeah, paid pay their dues and offer you know, their remorse and move on, then you'll see in their qualities and in their actions. Mm -hmm. And then we should embrace that too, just like with Jagaya Madai. We always remember that past time, but they moved on. And, and their community moved on along with them. Yeah. That's my thought. Thank you. Yes. We can yeah. say it's also, in that case, um, a sort of, there's a need for collective forgiveness. And usually communities uh, have rituals for, for things like this. And maybe that's something we need to think about. I, uh, Maharaj, uh, I have a point like uh, if uh -huh. we can approach uh, the right person expressing our flaws and somehow by uh, his mercy uh, we can like find uh, what's the best solution for it and uh, that helps a lot like expressing our thoughts to the right person like meeting yeah. a right person and explaining is a big thing in a way to our uh, like uh, correct ourselves and move forward. Yeah, it's uh, of course, as as you say, as Rupa Goswami says, that that would be part of uh, the process of sharing uh, guhyam akyati, uh, saying something in confidence, sharing, um, and I think it's also um, there's a. a In again, going back to the Catholic tradition, they've they've made it very formalized. Uh, the idea of confession: you do something, uh, and then you go, and you uh, you go to the priest, and you make a formal confession, and then 
the the priest gives i think they call it absolution uh, which is kind of putting you back into uh, into the right position with god um, for Vaishnavas, it's not formalized, but it's uh, it's still it's still there. The idea of opening, and it's really an opening of the heart, isn't it? As you said, it's it has to be to the right with the right person, not just anyone. Yes, dear Lalita. I will be very short. Um, somehow, while Margot Chandrika was writing about, uh, talking about uh, her question, a new girl might explaining all this. It, it came to me that um, in this Purushota month, she's been um, serving Krishna and meditating very intensely, like double than usual. So that remorse um, came out um, much stronger than than usual it would be usual and also i remember before gurmaji saying about us recognizing that feeling in us and embracing it so thinking okay that's what's coming out of me now let me just accept it because it comes from me and let's see if i can um i'm gonna hold it and hold it and let's see when i'm gonna let it go yeah. And how that can happen. So I was thinking the line of letting go is first uh, uh, asking for forgiveness, uh, other person or community, then, um, then also loving yourself as well, because Krishna loves you. So you love yourself as well. And then, and then uh, because of all that love, you just let go of that feeling that's not going to help you in the longer run. Mm. And, uh, um, yeah, and then the third thing that I thought of is just uh, having that feeling so deeply is uh, like a great love uh, of Krishna because if we have those feelings that are not uh, stopping us from progressing towards Krishna, they have to be removed away um otherwise we can't go back to god that's my third uh, i mean that that similar thing did happen to me a few times so it's not a pleasant feeling even though i feel krishna's love i feel gurmaraj's support but still um it's my own feeling i have to deal with mm. or mangalas <laughs> Yeah, I think also, and maybe it's connected to what you're saying, um, when remorse becomes morose, <laughs> it has something to do with uh, an over-expectation of perfection on our part. Um, yeah, instead of letting Krishna be the perfect person, and we are uh, his servants and doing our best, uh, we start, it, it becomes, uh, yeah, it can turn into a kind of envy of Krishna. <laughs> um, we expect ourselves to be perfect like, like Krishna. Yeah. Very good. Okay. So these are a few thoughts. I hope this was... Mangala Chandrika, did you want to add something more now since you started all this? <laughs> um, it was really helpful to hear all these different wide perspectives, um, also from you, Guru Maharaj, and others. And yeah, I felt something, um, while well, also Dira Lalita was telling um, about her realizations, is that the pain is normal and the pain is helpful, and we should see it like that. Um, and it seems almost contradictory that you would get back on the horse <laughs> immediately. <laughs> so I guess taking some time to really process that will help, but that should not discourage us from stepping further and actually taking the energy properly and 
trying to improve in relationships where we feel we failed or whatever it is, which would mean like asking for forgiveness. It can give us an impetus to do um, better service in ways that we can momentarily. Mm. So, yeah. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you for the nice question. And uh, let this also be a suggestion for others uh, in the future, we can have, you know, we can have other discussion and on, on other questions. Um, and I don't want to get overwhelmed with questions, but I, <laughs> if you have a question, you could send it to me um, in advance. Gives me a little time to think about it before the Saturday meeting, and then we can discuss. Well, uh, let's resume our discussion of the Holy Dham, shall we? Uh, just briefly today, uh, yes, last time we, we had some interesting digressions, transcendental digressions, uh, I'm coming back now to uh, His Holiness Shivaram Swami's discussion, the truths of the Dhamma, and uh, we are continuing with this discussion about the sort of intentional Dhammas created by devotees, and uh, he has made a comparison uh, establishing a dhamma to establishing a deity. Uh, and then he says, that Srila Prabhupada never made, he never gave instruction that to establish a dhamma, we should make some kind of separate ritual for that purpose, uh, in, specifically in New Vrindavan in West Virginia, USA, there was no there were no rituals done. He just said, "Now we'll call it New Vrindavan," and uh, that they installed the deities. Prabhupada installed Shishi Radha uh, Vrindavan Chandra, who are still being worshipped there. Very very, very nicely in a very nice temple. Uh, so, <clears throat> uh, but then Shivarama says, if devotees feel that some additional ceremony should be done to establish a place as a dhamma, um, as a way to convince neophytes that the Lord is present, uh, or that the Dhamma is the Holy Dham, then that's all right. Uh, one thing he suggests is to bring sacred earth or water from, uh, from Boma Vrindavan, from the original Vrindavan, uh, as one possibility. <laughs> um, Yeah, and then he speaks about how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ordered devotees to go to Vrindavan and to ex excavate. Uh, I think Prabhupada uses that word, excavate. He says, before the Lord uh, visited Vrindavan, it was little more than a jungle with some agricultural fields. Uh, then perfect devotees like Sanatan Goswami could have lived comfortably uh, in such a place. But what did they do? They constructed temples, they installed deities, uh, and so on. 
uh, they beautified the holy dam because they wanted to attract uh, people. They wanted to attract attention to the Lord's eternal home. Uh, and then he has a discussion about whether neophyte or intermediate devotees can invoke the presence of the Dhamma. And he quotes Krishna in Bhagavad Gita, Ye Yatamang Prabhadyante Tangs Tadaiva Brajam Yaham. Uh, as all surrender unto me, I reward them accordingly. So it's a matter of reciprocation, uh, and this applies also to uh, the Lord's abode. If, however, he says, a practicing devotee acts on the order of a perfect Vaishnava and transparently follows the instructions of that exalted soul, then Krishna and his abode may still appear in their fullness. And the opposite is also true. If one neglects uh, the directions, the order of uh, the acharya, then the dhamma is not going to appear. Then he gives the example of uh, that Prabhupada gave about the electrician. And I will read uh, the whole quote. Prabhupada said on one occasion, So we know from the perfect, therefore my knowledge is perfect perfect. I am not perfect, that's a fact, but my knowledge is perfect, just like I am not an electrician. <laughs> but the electrician has told me that you push this button, there will be light. <laughs> so I am doing that. What is the use of becoming electrician? <laughs> I want light. And the electrician told me, just push this button. I am doing that, and light is there. That's all. <laughs> Interesting analogy. We don't know anything about managing electricity. Just push this button. Okay, light is there. That's all I care about. And then... Maharaj makes the point that Srila Prabhupada gave us, he calls it, a standing order to establish temples of Krishna and holy places, quoting uh, from the seven uh, purposes of ISKCON, quoting, holy places of transcendental pastimes dedicated to the personality of, God, of Krishna. standing order. Um, we had this on the what was called the library party. I was for a short time, uh, I, I got a sort of uh, temporary post on the BBT library party when I was uh, engaged to assist uh, the late His Holiness Bhakti Tirtha Swami, when he uh, was traveling in uh, Austria and East Germany. He needed someone who could speak German, so I, and I could do that, and I could also drive a car, <laughs> and so on. So um, that was the library party, and the aim of the library party was to, uh, to get standing orders for Srila Prabhupada's books. And what that meant was, um, at present, there are so many books already printed of Srila Prabhupada, but there are more books in production 
And so if someone makes a standing order, that means they will receive all the next books as they come out. That's a standing order. Uh, so here, <laughs> Shiva Ramaraj is saying that Prabhupada gave us a standing order uh, to establish temples. And his point is, uh, if we do this under the strict direction of Srila Prabhupada and previous acharyas, then, and we avoid offenses, uh, then uh, the holy dham will be manifest because wherever there is Krishna, there is the holy dham. Now, in the next section, I'm skipping a couple of paragraphs. <clears throat> um, Maharaj is, you can say, hastening to point out that there is a difference between Boma Vrindavan and any other place that we establish as, as the Dhamma. And he's saying that that difference will always be there because um, Chris, when Krishna appears in this world, he appears in that specific place. And so Bhoma Vrindavan, as it's being called, is, uh, has a special status. Uh, so he's saying there is always a difference. Then he gives an example of embassies and consulates. Um, a few days ago, here comes a confession. Um, <laughs> I don't very often uh, vote in American elections, but this time I decided to uh, go through the whole process of voting, even though uh, as an absent, absentee ballot. So several weeks ago, I sent away for the ballot and uh, it was quite several weeks and I thought, oh, maybe my application got lost and uh, they forgot about it or whatever. And I sort of forgot, but then I got the email with all the documents, I just have to print them out and fill them out. And then there's a very special way you have to prepare them for, for putting in the post. You have to have an envelope inside another envelope um, because it's supposed to be anonymous. So I did all of that. And then uh, devotees here I, I, I found out that if I bring my ballot, uh, the envelope to the American embassy uh, in Warsaw, then they will deliver it to America and I don't have to worry about, I don't have to pay postage. <laughs> Save a few coins. Saved a few zwotis. Uh, and so we did that for what it's worth. Uh, so uh, Shiva Ramaraj is pointing out this distinction. There are embassies and there are consulates. In the bigger uh, centers, there will be an embassy. And then uh, there will be branches of the embassy in other places, and those are consulates. So what he's saying here is that uh, Boma Vrindavan is the embassy. It's where Krishna appears when he comes to this world. And um, all the other places, the temples, the farms, the places which we create uh, as places for the worship of Krishna, uh, these, are, these are like consulates. So there's a difference. Uh, there's a kind of sameness and difference, if you like, but 
Uh, we don't ignore the difference. And um, okay, then <laughs> he quotes from some Puranas. Because the doubt may come, so this is a kind of purva paksha, that isn't it that wherever the deity is present, uh, he is non-different from Krishna. <clears throat> and so wouldn't, it, um, wouldn't that place be equal in potency to Boma Vrindavan? Um, and here are some examples that could support that argument. Quote, any place where there is a Shalagram Shila becomes so sacred uh, for three yojanas around that the benefit of all charity, prayer, and sacrifice performed there is multiplied many millions of times. So a yojana, they say, is uh, what? Six, uh, eight miles, I think Prabhupada said. So uh, three times eight, 24 miles. That's uh, what? 36 kilometers. And that's in one direction. So that would be a radius, the opposite direction. So 72 kilometers diameter circle around a Shalagram Shila. Hmm. All these places uh, within that circle, uh, any charity, prayer, and sacrifice done is multiplied, the benefit is multiplied millions of times. Uh, moreover, any living entity dying within a quarter a quarter of a yojana attains Vaikuntha. So two, mi two miles or four miles diameter. Mm. Okay. And then there are stories of liberation in holy places for persons who are even unaware uh, so, he refers to the story of two drunkards who once returned to Vaikuntha by dancing in an abandoned temple. <laughs> it wasn't even a temple that was functioning. It was just an old abandoned temple. A dead bird was granted liberation after having been carried around a temple by a dog. The bird was already dead. And a third example, Prahlad Maharaj, in his previous birth, became a great devotee by staying all night in the ruins of a temple after having had an argument with a prostitute. I think it's also mentioned that he was fasting the whole time. <laughs> uh, so these sort of pastimes um, or these sorts of, um, how to say, benefits we may say they give us hope. Uh, okay. Now, I think it's time in this connection to look at, um, let's see, <clears throat> at the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And, uh, whoops. Excuse me for that, because the uh, point is made that a char a Advaita Charya once said to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Tumi Jahan Se Brindavana, 
where you are, that is Vrindavan. And Shiva Ram Raj says, even though Chaitanya Mahaprabhu could turn any place into Vrindavan by his presence, he still went to Boma Vrindavan on pilgrimage because of the, the Dham's special significance. And what is that special significance? Krishna appeared there in person and performed his transcendental pastimes. Okay, now uh, let's go to Chaitanya Charitamrita because <clears throat> we can enter into this looking at the mood of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as he's approaching Vrindavan. Uh, I have a, I have a w one volume Chaitanya Charitamrita here. <clears throat> um, well, the anticipation, but actually we're reading now, he's already in Vrindavan and uh, he is very much absorbed in the ecstasy of being there. Uh, this is Madhya Lila chapter 17. Um, starting with verse 194. Pote gabhi gota chore prabure dakia prabuke bedai ashi hunkar koriya. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu passed through Vrindavan, herds of grazing cows saw him pass and immediately surrounding him began to moo very loudly. <laughs> Hunkar Korya. Uh, yeah, I guess there, I don't know if there's a Bengali word specifically for the mooing of cows. Maybe Sugopi knows if there's a, no, there's no official word. Um, and then seeing the herds approach him, the Lord was stunned with ecstatic love. The cows then began to lick his body out of great affection. Um, and then it goes on about how the cows were uh, forcefully coming to Lord Chaitanya, licking his body. And then it refers to the bumblebees and the birds, shukka pika bringa prabure dakki panchamagai shiki ganam nritya kare prabhu age jai. Bumblebees and birds like the parrot and cuckoo all began to sing loudly on the fifth note. And the peacocks began to dance in front of the Lord. And it goes on to describe the plants and the trees, and they're all um, expressing their uh, joy, shedding tears of ecstasy in the form of honey, and so on. <clears throat> uh, and the Lord sees their affection, and that moves him to feel uh, ecstatic love. Bhava, bhava Avesha. This word Avesha uh, means um, entry into, and it can also mean possession. And sometimes we, we see Prema Avesha or Bhava Avesha. The Lord becomes possessed, uh, literally speaking. There's a nice verse, um, Sanskrit verse from Govinda Lilamrita quoted here, because um, Krishna tells us that uh, Lord Chaitanya saw parrots and he saw a male and female parrot perched on a branch and then they 
uh, came <clears throat> onto the hand of the Lord. So this is a nice something you can uh, picture in your mind, uh, this charming image uh, that uh, Lord Chaitanya has on his hand, two parrots. And it says, the Lord then listened to them. And it seems these parrots were able to speak perfect Sanskrit Saundaryam lalana uh, lalanali dairya dalanam lila ramastambini viryam kanduki kanduki tadrivaryam amala pare paradham gunaha shilam sarva jananuranjana maho yasyayam asmat prabur vishvang vishvajanina kirtiravatat Krishna Jagan Mohana, the male bird, the male parrot sang, quote, the glorification of Lord Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is beneficial to everyone in the universe. His beauty is victorious over the gopis of Vrindavan and it subdues their patience. His pastimes astound the goddess of fortune, and his bodily strength turns Govardhan Hill into a small toy like a ball. His spotless qualities are unlimited and his behavior satisfies everyone. Lord Krishna is attractive to everyone. Oh, may our Lord maintain the whole universe. So it seems these, uh, this parrot, I don't know if the parrot had read the Govinda Lilamrita and therefore was able to quote or whether uh, Krishnadas Kaviraj received a report uh, from, uh, from Ch Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's servant of what happened. In any case, <laughs> these are wonderful things. Uh, but let me jump forward to sort of highlight the point that Shivaram Maharaj is making to verse 226. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mind was absorbed in ecstatic love at Jagannath Puri, but when he passed along the road on the way to Vrindavan, that love increased a hundred times. The Lord's ecstatic love increased a thousand times when he visited Mathura, but it increased a hundred thousand times when he wandered in the forests of Vrindavan. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was elsewhere, the very name of Vrindavan was sufficient to increase his ecstatic love. Now, when he was actually traveling in the Vrindavan forest, his mind was absorbed in great ecstatic love day and night. He ate and bathed simply out of habit. So that's a nice reflection, meditation we can have. We may, we may not feel such feeling <laughs> about Vrindavan, but we can think of how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has such feeling about Vrindavan when he goes there. And of course, we can read about when he goes there. 
Okay, I want to now look at comments. Um, yes, Sugopi Tungavidya has reminded me it's Kiran Bedi uh, who was uh, in charge for the for the prison in Delhi. And yes, she was the first woman um, uh, chief of police of the Indian Police Service. Um, and there was a, a documentary film made about that also uh, called Yes, Ma'am, Yes, Sir. <laughs> um, and Divya Singha is telling us Bhakti is so strong that not leaves uh, place for unwanted guilt. Shila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, okay, so this subject, Shila Bhaktivinoda Thakur mentions that when the anukul enters, anukul means favorable service, all the pratikula goes away, all those things which are against devotional service go away. Uh, and he's and then uh, he's pointing to this reference of Srila Prabhupada saying you're mm, you're not so special uh, to this devotee who said I'm the most fallen <clears throat> reminds us that our effort is minimal our thinking our actions are practically nothing the only thing we are encouraged to do by Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur is to take the feet of a Shuddha devotee. Yes, so we take shelter of the Vaishnavas. And uh, we have Chitrakarani saying, Srila Prabhupada said, this world is a prison house where we suffer and learn through suffering. So material creation is here so that we can be remorseful uh, and try to turn back to home, back to Godhead. Yeah, so, so suffering has its purpose. Um, if we see it as impetus uh, for that change of heart, which is remorseful, which then, going back to the point about anukula and pratikula, uh, which then gives us the resolve uh, to take up favorable devotional service and uh, keep distant from whatever is unfavorable. Mama Tamayi says that when we suffer, we burn our bad karma. Um, and we can take that, I would say, then as... Uh, a, a cause for happiness, um, which is to say also the Vaishnava feels that whatever suffering I am experience is, experiencing is minimized. I really deserve so much more uh, for all my, mm, all my uh, bad activities. Mm. Uh, and so this can be a cause of joy. And then Dharma Gopta is, tell, is asking us, are the auspicious benefits of Shalagram Shila applicable to Govardhan Shila as well? And I would say, why not? <laughs> if we understand that, well, yes, if we... If we think about what Srila Rupa Goswami says in Nectar of Instruction, I think it must be verse number nine. Um, of course, the last three verses are mainly glorifying Radha Kunda, but uh, he does refer to Govardhan as being especially, as being mm, special because it's been lifted by the Lord. So. Uh, the touch of the Lord is on Govardhan Hill. Of course, Govardhan is considered uh, 
sometimes re referred to as the best of servants of the Lord. And I was going to uh, share a pastime in that connection uh, from, uh, from Mathura Mandala Parikrama book uh, of uh, this e extract uh, from the Bhakti Radnakar. But we'll have to leave that for another time. Uh, because now I just want to say that mm, next week we have something very special to look forward to. Um, and I'm not going to tell you what that is. <laughs> uh, but you can anticipate. Um, we're going to have a, a special guest. And I won't tell you who the guest is. So now you can start speculating. Um, but uh, I think it'll be very nice. And we may also have other guests at other times. I'm arranged, actually we will have, uh, I have one other uh, special guest also arranged for not the next week, but the week after that. So this can be a kind of uh, expansion of our, of our Sangha in interesting ways. Okay, so thank you all very much again for taking this time out of your day. And I wish you all the best for this weekend and this next week. Um, it seems that I'm gonna be traveling on Monday, um, we're just going to the north of Poland to escape some construction sound that's going to be going on here. And we are being reassured that we will have a good internet connection where we are going. Yes, Krishna willing, that will be the case. Okay, so I will say thank you all again, and Srila Prabhupada ki jai, Ananta Koti Vaishnava Vrinda ki jai, Saturday Sangha ki jai, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur ki jai, Purushottama Masa ki jai, Gaur Premanande Hari Hari Bo. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so Haribo, much. Haribo, Haribo. Guru Maharaj. Hare Haribo. Hare Krishna.